Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. 2 Chronicles chapter 21 Then Jehoshaphat rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David. And Jehoram, his son, succeeded him as king. Jehoram's brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, were Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Azrahu, Michael, and Sheptiah. These were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Their father had given them many gifts of silver and gold and articles of value, as well as fortified cities in Judah. But he had given the kingdom to Jehoram because he was his firstborn son. When Jehoram established himself firmly over his father's kingdom, he put all of his brothers to the sword, along with some of the officials in Israel. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for eight years. He followed the ways of the kings of Israel, as the house of Ahab had done, for he married a daughter of Ahab. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, because of the covenant the Lord had made with David, the Lord was not willing to destroy the house of David. He had promised to maintain a lamp for him and his descendants forever. In the time of Jehoram, Edom rebelled against Judah and set up its own king. So Jehoram went there with his officers and all of his chariots. The Edomites surrounded him and his chariot commanders, but he rose up and broke through by night. To this day, Edom has been in rebellion against Judah. Libna revolted at the same time because Jehoram had forsaken the Lord, the God of his ancestors. He had also built high places on the hills of Judah and had caused the people of Jerusalem to prostitute themselves and had led Judah astray. Jehoram received a letter from Elijah the prophet, which said, This is what the Lord, the God of your father David, says. You have not followed the ways of your father Jehoshaphat, or of Asa, king of Judah. But you have followed the ways of the kings of Israel, and you have led Judah and the people of Jerusalem to prostitute themselves, just as the house of Ahab did. You have also murdered your own brothers, members of your own family, men who were better than you. So now the Lord is about to strike your people, your sons, your wives, and everything that is yours with a heavy blow. You yourself will become very ill with a lingering disease of the bowels until the disease causes your bowels to come out. The Lord will arouse against Jehoram the hostility of the Philistines and of the Arabs who live near the Cushites. They attacked Judah and invaded it and carried off all of the goods found in the king's palace together with his sons and wives. Not a son was left to him except... Ahaziah the youngest. After all of this, the Lord afflicted Jehoram with an incurable disease of the bowels. In the course of time, at the end of the second year, his bowels came out because of the disease, and he died in great pain. His people made no funeral fire in his honor as they had for his predecessors. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for eight years. He passed away to no one's regret and was buried in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. And so this particular king was not a a good man. He was not a good ruler, and um, judgment came down on him. So let's review this chapter. In verse 1, Jehoshaphat dies and rests with his ancestors, and he has a son named Jehoram who succeeds him as the king. And so soon as Jehoram gets situated, he kills all of his brothers who were, I guess in his mind, potential uh, rivals or possible political rivals. And he also killed some of the officials of Israel. So from the very outset, a bloody man, bloody beginning, uh, murderous intentions. um, uh, We don't know what was in his mind, but his actions speak for themselves. And so this one-liner appears. He followed the ways of the kings of Israel. Now, this is talking about all of the idolaters of Israel. 
from the outset, the northern kingdom was built on idolatry, the golden calf worship. And then along came Ahab and Jezebel and made things even worse. And this man married one of the daughters of Ahab and Jezebel. So he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, both personally and collectively with, um, with his family, marrying into the family of Ahab. Now, interestingly, we get a letter in this chapter from Elijah the prophet. Elijah the prophet was not one of the writing prophets. However, in this case, we have the written words of Elijah. And so Jehoram receives a letter in verse 12, uh, which said, and then I quote, This is what the Lord, the God of your father David, says. You have not followed the ways of your father Jehoshaphat or of Asa, the king of Judah, but you have followed the ways of the kings of Israel, and you have led Judah and the people of Jerusalem to prostitute themselves, just as the house of Ahab did. You have also murdered your own brothers, members of your own family, men who were better than you. And so let's let's stop with this uh, extraordinary opening. Elijah the prophet, speaking on behalf of the Lord, points out the fact that Jehoram was in sin. He was an idolater. He was following after the kings of the north. And as I told you in a previous episode, there never was a king of the north that was considered to be a good king because they were idolaters. And so this, um, this Jehoram was also an idolater. Not only that, the charge of murdering his own brothers, the members of his own family, is raised by Elijah the prophet as well. And so then he gives the consequences in this letter of um, Jehoram's actions, his evil actions. Verse 14, so now the Lord is about to strike your people, your sons, your wives, and everything that is yours with a heavy blow. You yourself will be very ill with a lingering disease of the bowels until the disease causes your bowels to come out. And so that's the end of the letter. What a horrible, horrible judgment. And so the Lord aroused the Philistines and the Arabs against Jehoram. They attacked Judah. They carried off um, goods, of course, but they also carried off his sons and his wives. Not a son was left to him except for his, his youngest son, Ahaziah, who we'll hear more about in coming chapters. But after all this, Jehoram was afflicted by the Lord with an incurable disease of the bowels. And um After two years, his bowels came out and he died in great pain. Friends, I don't know what this disease was. It may have been what's uh, commonly called now ulcerative colitis, but um, uh, it was an incurable disease that killed him. And uh, um, very, very sad epitaph to the man. His people made no funeral fire in his honor, and he passed away to no one's regret. And so he wasn't mourned in death. He wasn't buried with any kind of honor. He just died under judgment. Now, friends, the Bible says that the Lord takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. In my life and in your lifetime, of course, many wicked people have died. But for the people of God, someone dying in their wickedness is never a victory. Obviously, there comes a time when the Lord says this far and no further. However, our goal as believers in Jesus Christ has to be the redemption of mankind. And so we need to be praying for the redemptive purposes of God, even in people we see that are off the path, even in people like this man who uh, was an idolater and a murderer. As long as anyone's breathing, we need to be cooperating with heaven for some type of redemptive path for them. Now, I'm not talking about your politics. I'm not talking about your voting life. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about your life as a child of God and as a citizen of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We need to cooperate with the redemptive plans of the Lord for mankind. We need to also have the same attitude that God does. The Lord takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. We shouldn't either. And so, Lord, forgive us if we've taken any kind of pleasure or or been sarcastic when someone has lost their life and we believe them to be wicked people. God, may we have a heart like Jesus, who died to love mankind and give mankind a a way to be saved and not to perish eternally. Lord, may our hearts be toward man as your heart is. Lord, um, uh, we do love the people of the earth, whether they are believers or not. But Lord, help us to have more compassion, more prayerfully, 
to reach out at, at every opportunity that we get. Lord, not that we would be aggravating, but Lord, that we would be redemptive along with you and your plans. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.